Where's everyone going? Bingo? Grab the wall. Wiggle like you're trying to make your ass fall. Hella thick, I want to smash them all now. Welcome back clan, it's good to see you guys again, and we are continuing our journey through every Resident Evil Platinum. In this video, we're going to be going for the Resident Evil 3 Remake Platinum, Code Veronica X, and the RE4 Remake Platinum. I already did the original RE4, which I mentioned later in the video, but it's time to get back to work boys. We've got three big Resident Evil games to tackle, and I know this video is a big boy, but hopefully you guys enjoy the journey with me, and if you don't want to miss future uploads, consider subscribing if you haven't. Other than that, let's get after it, boys. Oh, and if you're new around here. My hero. Resident Evil 3. It's time to Platinum Resident Evil 3 Remake, and the first thing we need to do is have a plan of attack. Now, on PSNP, you can see it says four playthroughs, things like that. What I want to do is I want to do it in two playthroughs. I'm going to do it on assisted difficulty and just get the collectibles and the missable slash miscellaneous trophies. And then for our second playthrough, we're going to do Inferno using the rocket launcher that we unlock. And that's pretty much it. At least I would like to do it in two playthroughs, but because I'm an idiot, well, you'll see later on. Now let's get after it, shall we? Bro, how, how does Resident Evil 1 remaster when it's like tank controls? Have booby physics? You know, it don't matter. It don't even matter, bro. Smash or pass, boys? Like, what's going on? Don't do that. That's a song. They're gonna have to wait, man. Hey, yo, flaky bakery bread? No way, bro. Raccoon milk? Straight from the raccoon's teat or what? Right. And of course, the most important part of any playthrough is choosing your drip. I mean, at the end of the day, getting trophies is really cool. But if you're not looking stylish, are you doing it right, man? Drip is always going to be forever. So we decided to ask chat and we chose the original Jill costume and the default Carlos. After exploring the apartment, we end up finally leaving. And this is where we get our first trophy to lock us in for this platinum. And that's right. Big boy comes through the ceiling and then we manage to get away for now and pop our first trophy. We managed to escape the first incident on our own, but then thankfully we got some much needed help. That looks kind of sick, bro. Is this Carlos? Do you see him really on or not really? Yo, he grabbed the missile, bro. Yeah, what a thug. All right, now I know why people like him, bro, right off the bat. Carlos is a real one. And he kind of thick, bro. Hey, somebody to lean on, baby. Clear. That's already our second trove. So. One thing we had to be mindful of playing throughout the game is these Charlie dolls. Now we get our first trophy here for breaking one of them, and we need all of them. Early on, we get two easy trophies for just learning how to combine items. And then secondly, we also upgrade a gun for another trophy. Now we're at a part where we can get a missable trophy. We needed to collect these crystals, put them in this machine here, and then if we grabbed all of them, we would pop the trophy and get another inventory upgrade. Oh shit, I knew something was gonna happen. Oh, was that a fucking PTSD of Resident Evil 1? Oh no, it actually is there. Damn, bro. Oh shit, man, I've seen enough hentai to know where this going, my boy. Now, as I said, on our first playthrough, we're trying to do this without healing, and there's a part where you get a parasite inside of you. You're supposed to heal here, which doesn't void the trophy, but being that we're on the easiest difficulty, we actually didn't even need to heal at all. As long as we didn't get hit or anything like that, we were fine. The good news as well is there's a lot of enemies in this little area here where we can get a trophy that's kind of like feeding two birds with one scone. Escaping that part, we were feeling really good until, bam, he comes busting out like the fucking Kool-Aid man. But we managed to get another trophy here by knocking him down and then stealing the briefcase, which has weapon parts in it that you can use to upgrade some of your weapons. Bro, Carlos is a thug. My man had a claymore set up, bro. Damn, bro. Go, go. Thankfully, we managed to escape and make our way into the sewers. Uh, bro. What type of dog is this? 
After making our way through the sewer and getting back up to the surface, of course, Nemesis jumps us again. He's got a giant ass flamethrower. So we're just kiting him around this area here, putting in a lot of work with the assault rifle and making sure we take him down once and for all. We end up taking him out, or at least that's what we think at the moment. And we almost become a Jill sandwich before we move out of the way at the last second and pop another trophy. Now, I know you didn't think that was the last time we were going to see our boy Nemi, right? Well, of course, Nikolai leaves us behind on a subway train to get screwed over. But thanks to old man Jenkins, he takes one for the team and he blows this son of a bitch back to hell. Or does he? Like, bro, come on. Nemesis is like the Michael Myers of Resident Evil, bro. Now this next trophy is cool because in Resident Evil 2 you meet Marvin and he was bitten and this is how. Sorry. Sorry. Now the trophy just requires us to finish off Brad, but this was so cool because now you kind of know why Marvin was on edge in Resident Evil 2 when he was speaking to Leon. Stop. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. You take it out. Or you run. Got it? Now, Marvin was blown away because Brad was a zombie and could talk, but I think I'd take the win here because this shit's way creepier. Oh, shit, he was behind me? Oh, I thought he was around the, the banister right there. Wait, what? I still don't really know where he's at. Oh, he is. What? How'd he grab me? Bro, he just walked... My man walking through walls and shit. He's not... Bro. Bro. Are we playing Hogwarts Legacy right now? This is scary, bro. Where is he? This is scarier than Nemesis. Bro, what the fuck? Bro, what's going on, bro? Bro, what is actually going on right now? Look at this guy. What? Jimmy. You scary fuck. What are you doing, my boy? I'm making sure you're good as dead, my boy. <laughs> Jesus. And if that wasn't bad enough, we're back to fighting Nemesis again. This time he's got even more crazier. He's massive. He's doing all kinds of crazy shit. And we've just got to finally take him down. Maybe, right? Who, who fucking knows at this point? No, that wasn't a good dodge. Damn, how is he still alive, bro? Right, let's do this. Fake. I didn't have any fucking ammo in that. Fake. This is fake. I didn't have any fucking ammo in that. Now, we did take him down, but unfortunately, Nemesis still penetrated Jill. I could have probably worded that better. That's on me. Regardless, he poisoned us, and we're lucky that Carlos came to the rescue again. So now we're taking over control as Carlos and we're trying to save Jill. We're defending the hospital here through waves of zombies so that way we can make sure Jill gets the treatment she needs and that we can get her back up on her feet. But man, playing as Carlos, it just had me feeling all kinds of ways about him, if you know what I'm saying. They got fucking pwned. I need a hero, baby. I need a hero. Not even close. Carlos making me thick down in the pants. What? Now that we're back up on our feet, we have to get back to some trophies. So we get one for unlocking all of the locks within the game, and then we get another one for finding a hidden gun. Guaranteed to give you a headache. We finally make it to the testing facility, and of course, we run into Nemesis again. Who would have thought, right? But with Tyrell with us, surely we'd be fine. <sighs> I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> Barely escaping, we make it to the next room and we find our last Charlie doll for the trophy. You remember those things? All right, ready, boys? Our final collectible, man. Let's go. Goodbye, Charlie. 
Here we were thinking we outran Nemesis, but he was actually sniffing for us the whole time, kind of like a creepy dude at an anime convention. After finding us, we're then in one final battle against him after Nikolai shoves us down into the pit. Now this time around, we do have grenade launcher ammo, so I go in on him with it, try and take him out quickly, and then of course, Carlos with his impeccable timing makes it there to save the day. You're okay. Let me spot for you. Carlos turned him into mush, and then we progress further until we meet Nikolai again. Remember this asshole? He's been screwing us over the whole game. Well, he's going to screw us over one last time. We get to fight a big boy nemesis, and the only way to do damage to him is to use this giant-ass gun that's ran off of, like, double-A batteries. But all you do is hit the weak spots, get him to drop down, pop back in the energizer batteries, and then shoot him again with the big boy gun. You're going to rinse and repeat until he's dead, and then you just really want to shove it on in there. The gun, I mean, dude. Jesus Christ. Now, the first time I thought this fight was so easy, but man, this fight is going to give me hell on Infernal difficulty. However, we get a trophy for defeating him, getting all the collectibles at the end here, and then also a few more trophies for finishing the game. <laughs> trophies. Minimalist for not using the item box. We died once, I'm triggered. I might need these for later for healing one time or less, which we healed zero times. Not even at the scripted point did we heal. Having finished our first playthrough, we could finally do Infernal difficulty. Well, not quite yet. We've unlocked the shop. Now what the shop does is you earn these points throughout the game from doing challenges like so many headshots with a certain gun, etc. And then you can buy an infinite rocket launcher for that many points or whatever you want to buy really. So what I did was I, I load an older save, for example, right here I made with Carlos and I made sure to make a backup save here so that way I could reload it for the challenges specifically. I could then farm the points, rinse and repeat, do the challenges, and then you can see I would earn a certain amount of points depending on the challenge. And then I can use that to buy the infinite rocket launcher to make infernal mode much easier. At least that's what I thought. Yeah, at least, you know, in some parts. Yeah, good job, brother. 100 is, is massive, bro. We're gonna get to 100 eventually, my boy. I just need to grind harder, my boy. Yeah, I think remake-wise, people don't like this one as much. Yeah, I don't know why I just dipped like that, but look, bro. Did we die already? Okay, cool. Bruh! <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be really f***ing annoyed, man. Hey, yo, chill, bro. Bro, this dude's fast, bro. Bruh, he's right. Oh, my God, dude. Jesus. My man hauled dick after me, bro. Jesus. All right, well, here comes, my boys. Round 86. Yo, Brad, thanks for the help, my boy. Absolute giga chat. Thank you, brother. Is there still Zambies coming up, bro? Sorry. Apparently, bro. Apparently, the regular Zambies. Maybe because I was injured. Bro, no shot. Okay, no, no. It's just because it was like the opening sequence and I was injured. Can I roll now? Okay, I can roll now. We're, we're good. Are you sure about that? Did I say we was good, my boy? Did I say we was good? Because I'm a donut. I am not good. Bruh. Bruh, I'm trash. I'm already out of ammo too, I guess like. Bro, this is the game right here, my boy. Can I dodge these two? Okay, I ran right into them. Oh my fucking God, bro. God damn, bro. This is some booty shit ass crumbs. Wait, so you don't even have to why was I going the other way? Bruh. Bruh. Bro, no way did I just do that, dude. So hold up real quick. They're in this alley, bro. Bro, I don't even have to fight them. Bro, you guys were letting me fight them the whole time. You said you... Oh, my God, bro. 
That's why it was booty shit ass crows, man. I thought I had to go through the fucking zombies. You guys are trolling, bro. Damn. Oh, there's still a guy I'll have to dodge in the car park elevator. What about this fucking goober? I spammed R1, you bitch. Bro, I can't even tap X fast enough. What the f The elevator, though? Oh, shit, right. Isn't there a few, actually? No shot. Oh, shit. Oh, go, go, go. No, no, no. Is he up my asshole? Oh, that's it? Is that done deal banana peel, boys? Are we in the clear? Oh, thank fuck, bro. F that shit, man. First fucking try, boys. Yo, can you open the door instead of fucking running your mouth, bro? You coming? I love you, Carlos, but come on, my boy. I guess call it a speed run for a reason, bro. Not to fucking, like, sit there and play with your dick in your hand. Let me take the burden off of your shoulder, and I'll play with your dick. So as you can see, the beginning part's really rough in this game on Infernal until you get to the infinite rocket launcher that's in your storage box. Once we got that, we could finally start smashing out the playthrough. Um, if we fuck up, I gotta save there now at least. Oh shit, a Zambi! Get f oh shit, more Zambies! Get f oh shit, a Zambi! Get nope! Like, oh god, I missed! I'm trying! <laughs> Bring the trains online. Bro, he dodges that shit? Hey yo, what the fuck? Hey yo, chill, bro. So as you can see, for the most part, it's really easy, but sometimes Nemesis came out of nowhere. And uh, yeah, honestly, this was the most intimidating I've ever seen Nemesis, bro. All right, we gotta dodge this shit again, and then we gotta remember that he comes out of nowhere. Where's he at, bro? Cause he came out of fucking nowhere last time. What's up, fucking? Oh, look at this mother, bro. Bro, look at this mother. You see how he's dipping at me, bro? Bro, stop! Bro, what the fuck? Oh, God, bro. Jesus, fuck, man. My man put on his running shoes. Jimmy Dean? Are you good, my boy? This is a speed run, but I really just gotta make sure you're good, my boy. Jimmy. Bro? I'm inside of Jimmy. Ultimate speed running here, boys. You gotta beat the game in two hours, and I'm inside a dude right now. Spending my time wisely. With all of these funny and just kind of intense moments throughout the story, it went by even faster this time around. So we managed to get to this point here where we could get a miscellaneous trophy for grabbing all the fuses and under the time limit. And then once we pop them in, we get our last miscellaneous trophy. Hey, electric slide, boys. There it is. Here it comes, boys. Our final save. Our fifth save for Inferno. We made it, boys. Final boss. Go to game. Oh, shit. I wasn't ready for that. Oh, shit. I wasn't ready for that one either. I wasn't ready for that one either. I wasn't ready for that one also, actually. I think I died. Okay, so he goes a little bit apeshit right there. All right, for sure. We, we know this now. All right, so we made it to the final boss with five saves or less, meaning we can get the S rank. However, this is one of the harder parts in the game and most people seem to agree. After countless attempts on this, we finally managed to pull the W and then there's just one quick time event left where we have to shoot Nikolai before he screws us over. And as long as we can do that, we get our trophies and we beat Resident Evil 3. Okay, awesome. My asshole just got tore up. Shoot him! Uh, I can't! Bro, if I missed it, bro, it. that would be trash. There's no other way. Can you miss it actually, bro? Don't don't Carlos! No! Wait, did I miss? No shot I missed! <laughs> Knew you couldn't pull the trigger. No shot I missed. There is no shot I missed. Dude, there is no shot, bro. There is no shot.
Oh, you don't have to go for a headshot? Oh my god, bro. I thought it had to be a headshot, bro. Okay, whatever, right? Not a big deal. We get to start from our fifth save, which was right before the final boss. Unfortunately, we have to kill him again. And yeah, for some reason, I just kept dying, man. And I was starting to get pissed. But little did I know, this was the least of my problems. Oh my fucking god, dude. Are you kidding me? What a stupid dog shit fight, bro. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Huh. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So fucking dumb, bro, that he can chain stun you. No way. No fucking way that just happened. I was reading over there looking to the left and I just saved, dude. Oh, my God. We have to replay it now. That's right, boys. What an absolute idiot. I'll let past me explain what I thought was going on at the time, but damn, bro. It still hurts looking back at this footage. I accidentally thought I was in the load menu, um, Jim, and I was in the save menu. And I usually make multiple saves, but for some reason I just kept it all in the same save. And I put it on fucking this one and I saved six times. And you have to only save five times. If you save more than six times, or sorry, more than five times, then you won't get the S rank. And we were literally on the final boss. Now, restarting was kind of rough because you can tell I had enough and I was ready to go to my next Resident Evil game. Yo, what up, John? What's up, my boy? Bruh. Oh, my God, man. Oh, I actually don't know why I'm playing this game. But then sometimes I had fun moments like this. Regardless, I wanted to slam this play throughout fast, so let's get it done. Goaty though, never mind, I'm about to get fucked. Oh, Goaty? Dude, we hit him with the, the fucking wombo combo, my boy. My assignment is to search for the president's missing daughter. What? All by yourself? <laughs> I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. Then again, maybe you did. Oh, we don't have to save, bro. Look. Oh, all right, ready? Our fifth save is right before the final boss. Thank God. Duh. That's right, boys. And you best believe we backed up the save to the cloud as well. I've been trophy hunting since 2012, and I still made a stupid ass mistake. So learn from me. Be better than me. Nope. I'm. Wow, he's chaining me. Please, there's just one over there. Bro, it, it missed one. God, bro. Bro, what? Ooh, this motherfucker, man. After a handful of tries, we finally managed to pull the W again, just like before. But then we were a little bit on edge because we had to do the Nikolai part again. But now knowing that I had to do it quickly and I didn't have to go for a headshot, all I really had to do was make sure I aim for the chest and just do it fast, and then we could get our platinum. Now, my remaining trophies, I was going to have them all pop right here at the end, and that's exactly what happened, but I wanted more of a dopamine rush. But instead, I got something like, you know when you're using your vibrator and then the battery dies? Like, bro, what do you mean? Like, how do you know what that feels like? Bitch. Oh, f*** that motherfucker, bro. And we quick shot that son of a bitch. Give me my seven motherfucking trophies. Obviously, I had some pent-up aggression, but I also want to thank everyone that joined me on the live streams. Thank you, boys. Bro, 107 viewers at the point of popping the platinum? Let's go. And the new animation? Take it all in, baby. All right. Dominator. Here comes the dopamine, boys. I just popped them all at once, bro, because the PS5 is trash. Bruh. I forgot it does that, bro. 
It pops. It's so quick at popping that it pops them all, bro. <laughs> Bruh. 336. 336. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the platinum. So long, RC. Resident Evil. It's time to get the platinum trophy in Code Veronica X, a game I really enjoyed growing up, and yeah, I'm excited to play it. So looking at PSN profiles, we can see that it's just one playthrough, 15 hours, and a 6 out of 10 difficulty. Easy enough. So my plan of attack is to beat the story mode while getting every single missable trophy that I can. And as long as I do that, I'll be able to do it in one playthrough. In Code Veronica X, we play as Claire Redfield. And we are on this facility here, and we are on the run. But we hit them with the old gratata as they surround us. And unexpectedly, they blow up. And as you, yeah, we still get caught. It's, it's pretty fucked up, man. Yeah, we, we still get caught, bro. We're trash. He takes us down to a cell and locks us up. But after a change of heart, he decides to let us go. So we say our goodbyes and we end on good terms. And we'll probably never see that guy again. What are you saying? You're free to leave the complex. Now, Code Veronica X is one of my favorite Resident Evils from my childhood. And the cool thing about these older Resident Evils is anytime you open a door, or go up some stairs, you get to watch this fucking scene every time, dude. Every fucking time, dude. You get, isn't that, isn't that great? Dude, that's at least, oh my God, bro. That's like 15 seconds, bro, straight up. Now, even though we were let out of the cell, we pretty much want to go right back in there, bro, because the moment we get up here, we are surrounded by zombies. I'm talking about left, right, everywhere. That's all good because we are protected by the dude up on top with the minigun. And this is where we meet Steve, one of the other characters in Code Veronica X. Bro, we, we almost took this dude out and listened to this, man. He is arrogant, bro. Look, he's ignorant, bro. Look. <laughs> bro, this guy, dude. He did the tight tight, bro. Despite him being smug, it's all good. We get our first trophy and we lock us in for this platinum. Even though he left us, we make it to another area with a metal detector and then we run right back into him again and it's kind of awkward. You'll just end up disappointed if you rely on others. Believe me, I know. What was that all about? We make our way further through the mansion and then we're greeted with one of the weirdest cutscenes I've seen in a game in a hot minute, bro. I mean, I was feeling weird down there. Like, bro, what do you mean down there? It turns out that cutscene wasn't just to confuse you sexually. I can't do it, bro. I can't. It turns out it was a bit of foreshadowing. So we meet this new villain of ours, and man, what a goofy ass laugh. To make matters worse, we leave the facility and then we're attacked by a giant worm. And honestly, it wasn't just any worm. It was an Alaskan you never take one of those head on, so we ran into the next room, and yeah, bro, he got goof here. We're then attacked by another iconic enemy, the Bandersnatch. And honestly, these guys can reach so damn far in this game, it's nuts. But thankfully, guess who comes to our rescue? That's right, it's our boy Steve. He comes in to save the day, and then after he defeats the Bandersnatch, He's giving us his Golden Luger's guns, and that's going to get us a trophy. But then we're also going to give him a confidence boost. And Claire, you know, raises his spirit a bit, and that gets us another trophy, which is a gold trophy as well. And it's a missable trophy. <laughs> this thing is too cool. You're not done yet. 
player sends us back out with some new confidence, so... I started blasting. Bah, wow. bah. That made him a little bit trigger happy, but then right when Claire was about to get bitten, he overcame his emotions for something he needed to do to save her. Only one thing is strong enough to fix that heartbreak. And that's going to be a trophy. Our troubles, however, are far from over. We make it to this very spooky mansion on top of a hill. And of course, it's riddled with bandersnatchers out front. I'm talking about, I'm getting slapped left and right. It's literally my childhood all over again. Like, Jesus Christ, dude, chill. Yo, look at this guy right here. Look at him. Hello. This leads us into like a medical ward. We kill a doctor and steal his eye. That's right, we take his eye. And we use that to open a secret door that leads us right back to the guy that put us in the cell at the beginning of the game. Now, when we get there, we give him some medicine and we do that because that's going to pop another trophy for us. He is super grateful, of course. He rewards us with a lock pick that we can then use for the rest of the game. We then make it to the best part of the game. That's right, boys. It is the one and only. He starts talking shit about Chris, of course. My brother is not the kind of person you think he is. Oh my god, bro. She is so lucky, bro. After he's been choking us out and just manhandling us, he says something. Dude, it's just really sus. Stay there. I'm coming. Then Claire is just like, I heard what you said. After that, though, our problems get worse as the island is set to explode. We try to get on a plane to escape, but unfortunately, the bridge is blocking the way. So we make our way back to try and lift the bridge. But of course, we run into the goofy guy again. On our way to open the bridge, he spawns a super intimidating and honestly, just downright scary tyrant. Never mind. Bro, I, I don't know. I don't get it, man. All the Resident Evil games, they bring these tyrant dudes out and we just put in the work, bro. And we walk right over them, man. Thankfully, we make it back to the plane ready to escape. But for some reason, some asshole snuck on board. If you guessed another super tyrant, then you would be correct. That's right. Another really big, massive, intimidating tyrant. And he's on the plane with us, bro. What are we going to even do to like get rid of this man? That's right, we just launch his ass straight out the back and we get a trophy. <laughs> I'm in danger! After escaping death, we fly to safety. But while we're flying on autopilot at the moment, Steve does something daring and honestly downright wrong. And I expect you to be able to point that out. Otherwise, <sighs> Steve, what are you doing, man? Hi, boys and girls. Say hi to Sexual Harassment Panda. Hi, Sexual Harassment Panda. During our lesson of consent, we end up crashing the plane into a new facility, and this is actually where the game prompts us to make our first save. We only get one save, and it's halfway through the game. Little did I know, that was going to be really useful later on. While exploring the new area, we find a dude locked in the basement, and uh, yeah, it's really creepy. Don't get me wrong. Now that is way, way too much for us already. So we're trying to get out of here. We find the valve that'll allow us to leave this place. Ugh. For fuck's sake, Steve. Do I have to get the panda back in here, dude? Are you kidding me right now? Steve, watch out. Steve, of course, had the booty on his mind still. And that ruined everything for us. That was our escape plan. And to make matters worse. Yeah, that's right. The goofy McGee's back. Steve redeems himself for the booty incident, and he comes to our rescue. Now, even though we managed to escape that, great. The dude that was down in the basement is breaking out. I don't know what we're going to do to... Oh, hey, Steve's going to say... Bruh. 
Okay, never mind. Steve's gonna sit this one out. So we have to hide in the corner over here and just start blasting. And whenever he gets close, we have to move and then go to the other side. Otherwise, we end up like Steve. With this strat, we easily kill him and then get our next trophy. My man was hanging there the whole fight. Ain't no way, bro. With him out of the way, we're able to get to the snowmobile and escape. However, it seems the goofy laugh guy has come to an end and someone else is taking his place. That's right. Goodbye, Alfred. Hello, Alexia. And she does not want us to escape. So she grabs us. And then this is where we get to take over Chris. That's right, boys. We in it as Chris Redfield. And you'll never guess what he comes across. Literally the moment we take over as him. Alaskan I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that again. But unfortunately, even though we managed to kill the worm, our boy from the beginning is finally dead. So we took his lighter, dude. What is he going to do with it? He's dead. Now, I instantly regretted taking the lighter because Karma came back and sent Australia after us. That's right. We got these big boy spiders. And if that was enough, Wesker's pissed. He sends these droids on us. And he also sends hunters after us. So that's when I like to use what's called the bitch strat. And the bitch strat is very easy to execute. All you want to do is the moment you see a hunter, whether it's one hunter, two hunter, no time to do the math. You just do the strat and that's just run to the door and leave. Running away, we managed to leave the area for a trophy and upgrade our gun. Now we still need to find Claire, so we pull the whole ET phone home and we head exactly to Claire's location. The problem is we're surrounded by zombies and after making our way through this ice and zombie infested area, we then finally get reunited with Claire and unfortunately she just had to say something. To ruin the moment. Not yet. We have to find Steve. Who's Steve? I can't believe that it's finally me and you and you and me, just us and your friend Steve. After deciding Claire's right, we have to go save Steve. We end up getting attacked, and then Chris and I are separated. While looking for Steve, I find a collectible for a trophy. After the collectible, we end up finding Steve, and we're able to free him from here. But then some really fucked up shit happens, man. That's right, boys. Steve has changed and we have to run away from here. If we do die, we have to start all the way back from that halfway mark where I saved. So we have to be very careful running away from him while also healing and making sure we don't die. We just barely make it to the gate in time, and then, before you know it, we're grabbed. And with Steve's last bit of humanity, he actually saves us. Look, man, Steve was a meme at times, but he was a real one, and he saved us quite a lot. The only way we're ever going to be able to get over this is if we got a trophy for it. We're then put back in the place of Chris, eavesdropping on Wesker and Alexia on the stairs, when Alexia transforms and then attacks Wesker. Wesker thinks he's in some sort of like FMV edit or something, and he starts wall running, like punching Alexi in the face. It, it's kind of badass. He's super hot. Like, what do you mean super hot, bro? Then this asshole makes us fight her, bro. Like, bro, what? Chris, since you're one of my best men, I'll let you handle this. Um, yeah, she's actually super intimidating, but we have the grenade launcher, so we make quick work of her, and then we pick up the jewel that she drops after she dies. Now, we have to collect three of these jewels in order to open the door ahead, and we have two of them, and the other one is guarded by this giant-ass spider. 
So we grabbed the green one as well. And now that we had all three, we can make our way into the building, get another trophy for some collectibles. And then we get to enter in a super secret password. When we enter the password in, it's gonna release that lock system. So then we can self-destruct the island. So all we have to do is enter in the password. Bro, there ain't no way they put that as the password, bro. Well, regardless, this starts the countdown of the self-destruct so we can make our way out of here before we blow up. However, we're stopped by Alexia. That's right. It turns out she wasn't as easy as we thought and she's still alive. So, I mean, we're so close to escaping. We're literally right there at the end and then... Yo, where do I get one of those things? The sucking thing on that must be like... We, we get attacked. We get jumped. So, as a good big brother, we tell Claire to make a run for it. Now, she stops her and we have to quickly kill her before she gets to Claire. So, I just unload on her and then... That's right, of course it isn't that easy. She turns into a bigger bug, there's a phase two, and we have to unload on her because she's even spawning other enemies that attack me while I'm attacking her. So I basically unload on her until we completely kill her, and then we can finally put it to rest. Never mind, we actually have another phase. That's right, we get a phase three, and we have to use a booty crumb ass RPG. Like the controls on this thing are miserable, but when we land the shot, we get that beautiful gold trophy and we beat the story for code veronica x now we're not even halfway through the trophies but as you can see we put in the work and we managed to escape and we survived code veronica x's story so we make it to the jet with claire and we finally get to escape now it was about here i realized or remembered there's a speedrun trophy for beating the game in under four hours. However, whenever you watch a cutscene, it is still accumulating the time and the counter towards that four hours. Well, this is one of my favorite games as a child. I'm not going to skip the cutscene. So all I had to do was sit here and pray and hope that RNG was on my side. We pop a trophy called Weapon Crazy. We wait for the timer to appear. That's right, your boy had to replay it from the last save, but that's okay, we got it done, and we got the trophy. Yeah, three hours and 36 minutes. However, that is not the end of our journey. We still have to do the battle mode, which is a side mode that you're timed, and you have to go through a gauntlet of zombies, making sure you survive, and then also doing it in under the time limit. Also, that's at first person or third person. Who the fuck is going to choose first person, bro? You'd be a psychopath. Secondly, this is where the NTSC version versus the PAL version really plays a big part because all of these doors you open are running at lower hertz on the PAL version and all of these load screens add to your timer. So if you have the PAL version of the game, I commend you, you are a god. However, me, I'm not fucking with that. I already own the game on the US store from when I lived in America. So we got our first trophy. That's for finishing it as clear in under six minutes and 10 seconds. Then we get Claire's alternate outfit, which we have to do in under eight minutes. Now, they don't really tell you this in the game, but you're playing at a disadvantage with this one because you're playing with one hand, making the game harder. So that's kind of unfair. But when you get to the freezer section, you end up getting the Is It Cold In Here trophy after clearing the zombies and then letting her freeze. After that, it was just a matter of going back and finishing within eight minutes. I made it to the final boss at seven minutes and 30 seconds, and I knew I had this in the bag. I was right here. You son of a bitch. Honestly, it only takes like seven minutes to get back to him. It's completely fine. We'll be all right. All right, dude, you're just being a dick. Finally, we get a God tier run and we finish at 731. Getting the trophy and then unlocking the ability to play as Chris. We then make it to this locker room here where we take out some hunters. But we realize back there, we were looking damn good. When I look in the mirror, a man looks back at me and says, Yo quiero chingar. Now, no amount of confidence would prepare me for the final boss because the final boss is the final boss from the story mode. And if the janky ass fucking camera view wasn't enough to be hard, you also have to do this in under six minutes and 30 seconds. That's right. And uh, yeah, it's already six minutes and 50 seconds and I died. But after a few attempts, I finally managed to pull a nice 603 and pop the trophy. Yo, who is stepping up to the plate next? That's right. It's our boy, Steve. You know, this one's going to be super easy. All right, Steve was a little bit rough. He's got infinite Uzis, bro, but they just weren't cutting it. 
You have to do this in under 10 minutes, and as you can see, we're at the worm boss at the end, and it's already 10 minutes and 30 seconds, bro. I was sweating. I was sweating for that, bro. After quite a few attempts, I get there at 7 minutes and 10 seconds. I'm feeling pretty confident. Two minutes later, I manage to pull the W and get the trophy. Next up, we get to play as Wesker, and you're probably wondering what cool-ass gun he got to use. That's right, take a shit on Mount Rushmore and call me Jefferson. He doesn't even get a fucking gun, dude. We have to use a knife the whole way, bro. And Michael Jackson tech, bro. Like, look at that. Hee <laughs> hee. Now, you might be thinking the knife's not too bad, but then you get to a group of enemies like this and one wrong swipe and you're done deal banana peel. It's that easy. Or you get to come up against a Bandersnatch or two. Oh, did I say two? Nope, that's right. Surprise, motherfucker. He comes out too. There's three, dude. After battling so hard to get this far, I take these guys out and I interact with this statue for another trophy. I'm at 11 minutes at this part. I finally make it to the final boss at 19 minutes. You get one hour for Wesker's, which is fine, until you get to the final boss with just a knife. Toasty! Yeah, bro, she roasted me alive. After realizing there's no way I'm gonna kill her with a knife, I have to figure out what to do. And I find out this casino can possibly give me a Magnum if I'm lucky. Come on, bro, give me the Magnum, bro. Please, give me the Magnum. Oh, I got the Magnum. Oh, boys. Now, if we can get to the final boss, then I should be able to get this trophy. Got her. Oh, I got the trophy then. I got her, right? Okay. Let's go, baby. Hey, let's go. So I should unlock the grenade launcher too in this, or the linear launcher, whatever the f it's called. Battle Master. Sorry, we just did Wesker with only a knife. I think we earned maybe a soda from the machine. What do you think, boys? I didn't bring my fucking wallet. God damn it, but that's gonna be a platinum. Look at that, boys. We don't sell one-ups. And the Slayer of Evil. Yeah, boys. Platinum 61, bruh. Welcome boys, in this video I want to get the Platinum Trophy for the Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now, I never played the original Resident Evil 4. You what?! And I could not get the Remake's Platinum or even play the Remake without experiencing the original. So we had two days before it came out, and your boy put in the work, got all 12 trophies, and then we could move on to the Remake. Man. Time to suck All today's right. dick, that's what I'm talking about. Now I played the remake on release, so I had to get the hand cannon through professional. Mercenaries mode wasn't out yet, but now you can just get it through mercenaries, so <laughs> there's that. So with this game requiring six playthroughs, I feel like we're gonna have to become Leon in order to get this platinum. When you play too much Resident Evil 4, like bruh. Now right off the bat, the game starts off hard, just like the original. You're getting attacked by the entire village. And we just have to make it alive until the bell rings and then they get sent to bingo. But this was a good time to practice the combat. Make sure we get familiar with it because we had a lot of playthroughs ahead and some of them being very difficult. So I tried to familiarize myself with the knife and then just learn the parry mechanic. Just so that way we can get a bit more grasp of the concept. And this was also going to pop our first trophy and lock us in for this platinum journey. <laughs> Where's everyone going? Bingo. Yeah, 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 he said it, he said it. Resident Evil 4, there it is, boys. After surviving all the waves of enemies in the village, we end up in this area here where we break into this old dude's house and beat his ass. And the reason we're doing that is there's a collectible in the area. There's gonna be a collectible in each chapter and we need to get 16 of them to unlock an infinite knife, as well as a trophy. <laughs> In the next area, we meet the merchant. We can buy, sell, or trade a lot of things with him. And he gives us a side quest to do a little bit of pest control. Boom, bam, bop. We turn that in and then upgrade our weapon. After doing the quest and earning some spindles that we can trade in later, we come across an old friend. You too, huh? Oh shit, it's Mr. Whoops. You guys remember him, right? Yo, I got you, brother. 
This on VR does seem kind of scary. Yo, can I save him right now? What's up, little whoop whoop? Bro, this is why Leon could get it, bro. Like, he can get this dick any day of the week, bro. Bro, what did you just say? Like, he can get this dick any day of the week, bro. Nah, bro, that's still gay. No. You're gay! You're- He's gay! Be free, little doggy. So we're obviously gonna save him. We pull him out of the bear trap, and then we come across some pigeons that we can get another miscellaneous trophy off of. What's up, pigeons? Oh! Hey, shield your eyes, and you get a trophy for it in this one. But look at all that treasure, man. We then find the merchant, and Leon mentions party, and I mean, we were on stream, everyone was having a good time with Resident Evil, so why not? Bob and Evil, brother. Thank you, my boy. Gold tier, baby. That had my blood pumping. The adrenaline was going, so we had to do something exhilarating. I guess. Three, two, one, oh, it has to be pistol? Three. Okay. Wait, should I shoot him in the skull part? Is that what that meant? I have to reload. Amateur shooter. That was decent for our first try. I'll take it. After getting S rank on the ones that we had available, we saw two dudes in the water on a boat. And then, and then we saw that. So obviously we're going nowhere fucking near the water. You feel me? Never mind. We're getting a boat and it was out of fuel and now we're filling it up with fuel and uh this leads us in to the big boy boss fight now i sucked ass at throwing those harpoons and that would haunt me a bit later but for now we could sell a golden egg and a fish to the merchant to complete two more side quests then we need to go get some heads so that way we can save the president's daughter from the church i didn't really word that right we need to get a head and another head to then get the key for the church. With the church insignia in hand, we can then go save Ashley, but there was a threat in my way. And that threat was Las Plagas. And anyone that knows me knows I don't fuck with Las Plagas. And all my homies hate Las Plagas. So we kick his ass, and then some old guy comes up to us. Remember them when they were playing bingo? Just a sweet, innocent old man. Wrong. Guess who it is under the mask? Come on, Scooby Doo. That's right, it's Las Plagas, and I can't stand Las Plagas. But it's all good because we finish him off and then we make our way and we get to save the president's daughter. Oh, Jesus Christ, this isn't her. My bad. Right, because before her, we actually have to fight El Gigante. And let me tell you, this ain't too bad because we got a little ace up our sleeve, if you remember from earlier. Who was a good boy? That's right, you guys, because you like the video. But who's another good boy? Don't do that. Like, why are you talking to us like that? When the dust settles, we see this thick-ass boy, and we know that it's going to be a bit rough. But, you know what? We hit him with the old, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. And he whips it out, and then we can attack it. And just when all hope is lost, we see a glimmer of light from the mountaintop. That's right. It's the goodest of boys. This is who we were talking about. He comes in to save the day and be the hero that he is. We then go ahead and drop him with one single crossbow shot to the face and we give him a good old Resident Evil circumcision. And then he's defeated and we part ways with our good friend who saved us. We then make our way to the church to rescue Ashley and I actually really like Ashley in the remake. I think they did a lot better with her. You can see here she's a little bit more independent. She can kind of try to defend herself. Where in the old one she just kind of reminded me of my uncle. Don't come. What? Once we find Ashley, we're then going to try and escape, but we get attacked by some villagers, which is actually a good time for us to get a miscellaneous trophy. <sighs> She's so lucky. All right, we're going to let her go get captured. So you can command her to be tight or loose. <laughs> Stop, bro. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, I'm a dick. Ah, <sighs> fucking dumb. Ashley will stick close behind Leon. <laughs> Bro, they could have chose different wording. That's that's not even me, man. 
That is not even me, bro. Oh, bro, what the fuck, man? All right, we need to let them catch her. Hey, yo. Hey, bitch. Grab her. Grab her. You can take her. I don't. I don't want her anymore. Oh no! You, my trophy. Granny, you're fucking my trophy right now. Yo, I can stab her. Wait for real? Did it just say that? Hold up, hold up. Give her back, Granny. Talk about near-death experience. There it is, boys. Another trophy. Now, as we were escaping the villagers, sometimes it seemed a bit impossible with so many enemies always attacking us. We needed more allies, and thankfully, the pig came in clutch. Yo, was that pig attacking the fucking enemy? Bruh. He's getting attacked by one of the pigs, bro. Even the fucking animals here don't like you guys. Bruh, the pig was beating his ass. Dude, look at him, bro. We just get fucked up by the pig. Yo, get him. Get him, Wilbur. Come on, babe, pig in the city. Beat his ass. Charlotte's web looking ass. Kick his ass, my boy. Oh, shit. Yeah, bro, beat his ass, bro. Yo, beat his ass. Wilbur. Editing this has been a wild ride. I didn't even notice he died when we were playing. And then as I continued editing, it turns out he didn't die. So, man, my heart has just been on a roller coaster with this. And this is why I don't fuck with Las Blagas. Yo, where the fuck is Ashley, bro? Look at him. And he's just munching away now. He's just munching. What a good boy. Bro, I, I really actually have no clue where Ashley went, man. I'm super triggered. She just said, Leon. Have a good one. Like, bro, what do you mean? I'm super by her, bro. Where did she go? Where you at? Bro, actually, low-key, we kind of ran through this part. Was she behind us right here? Bro, what if she was behind the door still? Yeah, so you got stuck behind the door. Kate, okay, bro, thank you for trusting me with your daughter, Mr. President. After escaping the villagers, we end up in a cabin. And this is basically a giant wave-based fight with a bunch of villagers. And wow, it wasn't too bad on this difficulty because we're just on an easier difficulty going for collectibles. But I would find out eventually that this part sucks ass. I've fallen and I can't. We then meet the big cheese again and he does what my stepdad used to do. Locks the door behind him and then he sends a shiver down my spine with just two words. Come, child. We're then forced to run away from him and run through all of his waves of enemies. And then when we think we're safe, he catches up to us. He jumps us while we're inside this building here. And just like the original Resident Evil 4, this fight is awesome, man. They killed it. I think it's so good. We're fighting the big cheese here. I just started unloading on him with the shotgun. Just going to town on him. And then once you can see his eye, just really going in on it. After we did enough damage, he then separated from his legs like he did in the original as well. This fight was done so spot on, and then eventually we finish him off for another trophy. Oh, grilled big cheese. I like how they called it that, man. Grilled big cheese. Let's go, boys. Ah, oh, Lord Sadler. Sorry, big cheese, but you're done, Ski. And your boy's an idiot, and he didn't pick up the treasure, which is Mendez's eye, so I had to reload my save and kill him again. I'm so dumb. I right, grabbed his eye. Let's going. go, baby. That wasn't too bad. At least we always make a backup save. Hey, you coming? Never mind. Remake Ashley reminds me of my uncle as well. Stop it. Get some help. Now, throughout the game, we've been collecting treasures. And whenever we do one in an area like the village or the island, things like that, we're going to get another trophy for that. You know, if, if the game's giving you too much macaroni, you can use the cheese. Is that what you're saying? Hey, bandit, boys. Let's go. Obtain all treasures indicated on the village in a single playthrough. So that's just the village portion done. Let's go, baby. With the big cheese out of the way, we can make it to the second section of the game, which is the castle. And up here, we can get a cannon and get another trophy. Oh, there's the barrel. Oh, we got it. Oh, I see one there. Can I shoot it with that? Hey. Can I shoot it with this boy? Overkill, boys. Let's go. Once inside the castle, we meet Salazar, and he tries to steal our girl. I would like you to hand the girl in. 
over to me. Now. No thanks, bro. The girl's just fine with me. After he gets rejected, we end up finding our first Garador, and they are so creepy in this, man. They made him even better than the original, and I absolutely love it. And we can get a miscellaneous trophy here off of one of them. So, as you know, they can hear us, but they can't see us. So what we have to do is kill one with only a knife, and thankfully, I had a few on me. I hope I have enough knife for this. Oh, fuck you, bro. Fire. Wow! Never heard it coming. Let's go, baby. How'd you like enunciate coming like that, bro? After fighting Wolverine, we end up in a room with a lot of enemies. And again, this would be a challenging room on harder difficulties. But for now, what the what the hell are these guys doing? Are they all turned into one, bro? They got a fucking train going. Human centipede looking ass. What the fuck? Then we come across a prime example on how these guys are absolutely nothing without Las Plagas. Yo, that was kind of creepy, bro. That was like a huntsman on the wall, bro. Oh, God. Bye, have a great time. Bro. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Bro, where are you going? What is he doing? We go through waves of enemies until we finally make it to the top of the castle and we get greeted by a troll. Now we gotta figure out how we can take him down. Okay, there's a cannon here. <laughs> After killing the troll, you're probably like, damn, what kind of insane thing's happening next? You guessed it. We're back at the shooting range, trying to get some more S ranks, baby. Oh, we got it. Come on, baby. But uh, I don't know if we get it. Oh, we got it still. After smashing out some more S ranks, we then find out we have to grab a lion head, a snake head, and a goat head, basically making a chimera to then activate a door. However, you'll notice this room is surrounded by knights. That's cool, right? They just they're just knights. They look like knights. They move like knights. They're knights. Wrong again, boys. It's fucking Las Plagas, man. It's always Las Plagas. But we take them out, and then we run off with the lion head, and then we make it to the goat head. And immediately after grabbing that, we get ambushed. So we have to get ready, clear a path, and then we can escape with the other head. Now, the snake head is just for eating dinner, so I didn't show that. Like, look, man, the dinner probably slapped, but it was kind of like, why are they making us eat dinner? That's right, boys. Leon gets captured this time, and we're forced to run away as Ashley. I mean, you've been hearing this the whole game, but now it's actually you that's captured. This next part we play as Ashley, and I just have to say the voice actor absolutely killed it. She genuinely sounds scared, and now I don't have to hear her sound like Sandy Cheeks anymore like the original. That's right, boys. It's Sandy fucking Cheeks. Help! Help me, Leon! Help! I got the key! I can get out! We grab the insignia and then make a break for it. Now, this part is kind of scary your first time playing it, because one hit and she's dead, and the voice actor really did well on that. Oh, God. Fucking run, bro. Goodbye, nerds. Oh, God, that's a lot of motherfuckers, bro. You guys ready for a motherfucking trope, baby? Look at that. That's an elegant ass crown, baby. $108,000 hairs for this crown, bro. Welcome. And then if you sell it to him, he's like, God, diddly damn. That's a fucking astute appraiser, boy. We then meet Verdugo, and he looks amazing in this, but just like in the original, I pulled out the RPG that we saved up for. And let's hope he doesn't put it in my butthole. Where you at, Jimmy Dean? I know you're gonna come any minute, Jimmy Dean. My boy? Oh shit, what's up? What's up, my boy? You. You're Ramon's lapdog. Bro, bro, man. 
Then it's going to be cold tonight, asshole. And then after we defeat him, we make our way towards Luis, and we get to fight another batch of bosses here. Oh, shit. Is this the troll bosses from the original? Say what? After you, I insist. Such a gentleman. Surprise, motherfucker. He's pissed. Put him on there. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Oh. Ooh. Let's go, baby. After Luis and I take those two out, we then have a segment where we're on the mine carts, and if we can do this part without taking any damage at all, we were gonna get another miscellaneous trophy. This part wasn't too bad, you honestly just had to make sure you hit the obstacles and hazards before you got to them. Gave me my trophy. Hope you like thrill rides, boys. That's another trophy for taking no damage on the mine carts. After we make it out of there, we make our way to the clock tower and there's a trophy to get all the way to the top of the elevator without any of them landing on it and then pushing it down or stopping it. And yeah, your boy was stuck here for a little bit. Yeah, there was always some asshole that would just fly out of nowhere and just jump onto my fucking elevator and stop it. Hello. No. The guy up top, bro. 20 minutes later. Oh shit, get him. Oh, please. Bro, where are you? Fuck out of here, bro. Hey, capacity compliance. We got it, boys. Ooh. After finally making it to the top of the clock tower, I'm very excited. I grabbed the treasure here. I'm not really paying attention. You know, I'm super hyped right now. And, uh... Hey, yeah, you want to walk right here? Are we supposed to walk? Bruh. <laughs> The good news is we reload our save, grab the treasure here, and it's actually our last treasure of this section. Even hey, Raider, that's for getting the tr that's for getting the treasures in this chapter or this uh this that's the fucking castle, isn't it? Let's go, baby. No. Right here. Hey, you talk too much, boys. We got it. All right, now we can kill his annoying ass. All ready? We popping out the magnum. You feel me? I can't see shit right now. Bro, fuck off, idiot. No thanks, bro. They actually named the trophy that? That's so good, man. I wish they would have kept the dialogue, though. But at least they did it as a trophy. Two more trophies, boys. It's just that easy after defeating salazar we end up in the last section of the game which is the island and here we find the regenerator enemy so i decided to go for what's supposed to be an easy trophy where you just have to kill two bugs at once by just aiming your scope and killing them while they're trapped up in this little vessel well for some reason they weren't spawning lined up perfectly so i tried to improvise line them up myself and yeah as you can see it didn't really work out like we could maybe do it Oh god, I just made this hell for me. Jesus this fuck, dude. By bugs. No! No! Oh, we got him. We got one. Alright, hold up. Can we lure him to this guy and then just shoot him like that? Like, try and line him up, bro. It's on his leg. Oh my god. You fucking dick. With so many reloads and retries, we decided to just leave it for now. We'll come back to this trophy a bit later. We had to progress, so we went to grab the wrench, which is inside one of the regenerators. And that worked out for me because the jiggle physics had me acting up anyways, and I wanted to be inside. Don't do that. Like, stop. All of a sudden, my room temperature IQ had a brilliant idea. I was struggling on hitting the bug sometimes, so maybe, maybe I was just a bad shot, bro. Like, maybe, maybe I was just a stormtrooper, you know? So we went to the shooting gallery. Oh, for fuck's sake, you fucking piece of shit. Oh! oh God. Ashley's getting dry as hell right now, 100%. Oh my God, bro. An A rank still, bro. Still an A rank. Holy fucking shit, dude. 
Dude, I just keep getting 8,000, bro. I don't know if I'm doing this correctly. No, I wasn't. It turns out you just have to go fast to get S rank. So I was doing it all wrong, and we needed to practice our aim anyways if we were going to be a beast on professional, so it worked out. Trick shot, baby. I have to hit this. Oh, please, S rank. Thank you, boys. Thank fucking you, dude. Fucking hell, man. First fucking try. Let's go. With our training finished, we decided to head back towards the regenerators. This time, there was an Iron Maiden waiting for us. And we could finally feed two birds with one scone, or in this case, two bugs with one stone. And we got the trophy, boys. I don't want to trigger him, though. I guess just right there, right? When he faces back? Yeah. When he turns again? Two bugs, one stone, baby. Finally, bro. Now that we were so heavily trained, we became a threat, and the main character of Prototype didn't like that, so we ended up having to fight him, beating him for another trophy. Bro, really? I'm missing everything right now, bro. I'm gonna try the Magnum on him, bro. That's good. I don't know if that's like how the fight's actually supposed to play out, but that's what I was doing. I missed the parry again, bro. I'm booty gun. Hey, you used to be a good guy, though. There's the trophy, man. After the boss fight, we're making our way back to Ashley, but we see the merchant again, and we finish this final quest for another trophy. I knew I could count on Jack of all you trades, win. boys. We got what another trophy. Do? Complete all the requests for the merchant. We then find Ashley, and using the key that Luis gave us, we get access to this laboratory so we can remove Las Plagas from her and then go to the final boss. Fuck it. Fighting the boss, we make quick work of him with our pistol and shotgun, and then we can move on to the final segment of the game, which is escaping. Pro move. Damn, I thought the shotty would have, like, made quick work of that. Special RPG, baby. I'm from the RPD with a RPG. Your small time. Ada gives us some keys to escape by the jet ski, but your boy just realized throughout the game we were getting another kind of collectible. You might have remembered them. The Salazar figurine. But we got one more left. Last one, baby. Ready? Revolution windup, bro. Another trophy. 28 tropes. We finally make it to the jet ski, and there's a miscellaneous trophy we can get. We have to basically escape without taking any damage on the jet ski. And this took me a couple tries. I'll admit, I kind of fucked up. Ooh. Bruh, I went... Wait, that didn't damage? Did that count? That didn't damage? Fuck, I hit a little box again, bro. Are the little boxes okay? Oh, God. Oh, God, I fucked that up. Did I take damage, bro? I can't even tell. Smooth escape, baby. That was far from smooth. Let me tell you. But we got it. With our first playthrough down, we can then move on to our second. We're gonna try and beat the game within eight hours. We're gonna complete the main story using only knives and handguns, and we're gonna complete the game without talking to the merchant once. Now, this is pretty easy, and honestly, it's probably one of my favorite playthroughs just because it was pistol and knife only, and the black tail, when it's fully upgraded, is so fun to use. Not to mention, we unlocked an infinite knife by getting all those Salazar collectibles. 
except I'm an idiot and I fucked that up. So I didn't have infinite knife, but the blacktail was more than enough. All right, enough of that dumb shit. Nobody cares about weapons. Look, weapons are temporary, but drip, drip is forever. I mean, these guys don't even speak the same language as us, but drip, it's a universal language, baby. And we gotta be in the pinstripe drip. Welcome to Bushido's tip of the day. You can catch a lot of flies with honey, or you can catch a lot of honeys being fly. Overall, I really did enjoy this playthrough. There's not a whole lot to say on this playthrough, um, except for, you know what, even though we have to beat this in under eight hours, we're always going to save the dog, and it actually gives El Gigante more health. But look, man, I have a soul, okay? Even if it makes things more difficult, I'm going to save the dog, bro. We finally meet up with Ashley at the church, and I had to ask the boys in chat, what would we give Ashley for her drip? And, and we obviously went with the emo one, so without further ado, let's go cut our... Sorry, guys, my commentary cut out there, but I said, um, cut our losses. Yeah. Just, just clarifying. And just like that, we make it through with our pistol and knife only, without talking to a merchant, and under eight hours. And we get to pop about three trophies, which was so good for the dopamine. Straight to my brain. Sprinter. Minimalist. For only using the pistol and knife. Sprinter's under eight hours. Silent Stranger for not talking to the merchant. Now next for our third playthrough, I didn't think it'd be too tricky because what we're doing is we're doing New Game Plus with the infinite rocket launcher and we're not healing. Well, at least I was going to try not to heal so we can knock that out as well. So I went into New Game Plus. I sold everything I didn't need to try to make the two million pesetas and then buy the infinite rocket launcher so we could get started. Honestly, from the beginning, it was going pretty smooth. <gasps> Now this playthrough is really cool too because the infinite rocket launcher has all these different kind of skips and that also made it easier. No shot, way over there? Oh shit, you're right. That's nutty, bro. Someone shot that with a pistol, bro? Oh god, a fucking troll? No shot, that's a troll. If only we had a way to... Okay, he's dead. Oh, look, man, it is what it is, right? Now, by the time we got to the garden maze, I was already at half health, and again, I was trying to do this without healing, so it wasn't looking too promising, but you know what? We kept pushing on. Okay, and I, I died as Ashley, too. Yeah, I'm pretty bad. No way, bro. I was supposed to debate him out of the hallway, and I got fucking pwned. However, we made it through all that, and we finally made it to the ballroom, which was a ball ache. I will tell you right now, this room was cucking me so bad, man. This room? Barely my assholes. And just when I thought it couldn't get worse, someone in chat said Novistadors are infinite respawn. They had said a gaming article had claimed that it was infinite respawn, and I figured, well, may as well test it, because if I can clear the room, then I can get through safely. Well, within literally three minutes of testing, I found out that it wasn't infinite, and whoever did say that was a lying piece of so I went ahead with my strat where I cleared the entire room of all the bugs, basically being a professional pest control, and then I kept saving as much as I could so that way we wouldn't take unnecessary damage, and then if we did, I could reload and try again. After a few more attempts, we finally made it out of the ballroom. However, this is what we made it out with. It's not exactly big, huh? Ooh, that's kind of small. Uh, Yikes. Bro, I might just continue, bro. Like, it's probably super risky, but... Fuck it, dude. You know what? We have a little bit less health, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. We're we're moving on. I mean, we have an infinite RPG. The rest of the game should be cakewalk, right? Wrong. Your boy is just about to experience the five stages of grief. No way! This fucker still got me. Ah, oh, okay. No, you fucking stupid beret wearing piece of shit. Oh, fucking cock sucker oh. bro bro did I get it mm, that's triggering do we do we continue boys or do we reload that 
Do we continue though? He hit me, bro. Like literally now, the rest of the game, if any enemy sneezes on me, I'm dead. Damn, actually, yo, you might be onto something, bro. Shoot him with the launcher, bro. You might actually be onto something, bro. Yeah, we, we finna try that right now, actually. Thanks, my boy. Yeah, we gonna, we gonna do that right now, my boy. Launcher? Yeah, good, good, good idea, actually. I'll try that next time, actually. I totally spaced, man. I can't believe I spaced using the launcher. I'll try it next time. Yeah, I'll try I'll try launcher this time, boys. My bad. I should have done I should have done the launcher, bro. Get him in the dick, in the asshole, in the dick. Oh, I did that early. That's okay though. He's trash. Bro, you are garbage, bro, and you should feel bad, bro. Oh, you should feel so fucking bad. What happened was unforgivable. But that doesn't give you the Oh, get fucked on, boy. Get fucked. God, I went like Kyle Ken on that motherfucker, dude. After Krauser, the rest was easy, honestly, and then we made it to the end boss, blew him up, got on our jet ski, and made it to the end for quite a few trophies. Professional 333 S rank. Frugalist, which is for not healing, boys. No heals on professional and promising agent, which is for complete the main story on standard or higher. And then proficient agent, complete the main story on hardcore mode or higher. And then peerless agent, complete the main story on professional mode. With three playthroughs out of the way and our next one being hardcore S plus rank, we were playing so much Resident Evil 4 that I felt changes like like Leon was inside of me. Oh, not like that. Jesus Christ, I wish. But no, in other ways. We, uh, look, bro. This is what happened. When you play too much Resident Evil 4, like, bro. In order to beat Hardcore with an S+, plus, we had to do it in under five and a half hours. But we needed some kind of strategy. So, thankfully, the scientists over at Bushido headquarters were right on it. So the plan was to survive to chapter 7, which is the castle, and on the way there, doing every merchant request that we can to get enough spinels to buy the exclusive ticket. The exclusive ticket could then be used for a free upgrade on a weapon called the Chicago Typewriter. That's right, this bad boy right here. Using a ticket on this would give it infinite ammo, and you wouldn't even have to reload it. So this would be vital to make the run so much easier, because from chapter 7 onwards, we are just going to be blowing through like nothing. So honestly, the village for me is the hardest part. Only really the cabin. Everything else before, it's not too bad. But fuck me, dude. The cabin was rough. And uh, yeah, I died quite a lot here until I really got the hang of it. After multiple tries, we finally clutched it and we were that closer to chapter 7, which would have meant our infinite Tommy gun. Oh, run. I'm dead. Wow, I'm actually dead. Actually dead. Please, bro, we haven't used, like, any healing items, really. Oh, please, dip, dip, don't hit me. Fuck it. I got him. Oh, I got him. Oh, get fucked, dude. The last part of the village we needed to do was the big cheese, and honestly, it wasn't too bad. And then we could finally get our Tommy gun, and I was so fucking excited, man. No, please, man, you gotta believe me. I I'm just an innocent old man. I'm not a Las Plagas. All right. I believe you. But my Tommy gun don't. I'm gonna give you to the count of three to get your lousy, lying, low-down, four-flushing carcass out my door. One... Two. Three. Keep the change, you filthy. Las plagas. All right, even with infinite ammo, you still have to not be stupid and remember enemy placement. Otherwise, uh, you're going to get got. Where is he? Is it this guy? No, it wasn't. Why does it sound like the pig dude's already spawned? Oh, it is that guy. Yeah, why does it sound like the pig guy's spawned? Doesn't he not spawn until you get in the doorway? 
It already sounds like someone's up. Hello there. Oh god, he is here. What the f dude, what the fuck? Oh god, he's he's starting his Beyblade. Holy shit, dude. I could have sworn that that shit didn't matter. I thought he didn't spawn <gasps> yet, dude. What the fuck, dude? When the fuck does he spawn there, bro? S plus AB. That's gonna be the S plus rank investigator. After doing hardcore S plus, I decided to do standard since now we know we can do it. And we unlocked the chicken hat, which allows us to take less damage. I put on the romantic skin and the chicken hat, and then I became a romantic cock. Four hours, 16 minutes. S plus. All right, boys, we are on professional. We went from romantic cock to full blown cock. We got all the feathers. The red cock eyes. We're ready, man. Let's get this platinum. Did Leon grow up on a farm by chance? Because he sure knows how to raise a cock. Overall, professional wasn't too hard with the chicken hat, but I will say there was quite a few times where we just ran out of supplies, man. I was either not picking shit up or I was just using that stuff wastefully. I can't even parry, bro. I can't parry. Like, he has to go down. All I can do is, like, fucking hope, bro. Bro, that didn't even do shit, dude. That wasn't even worth it. Oh. Wow, dude. Holy shit, dude. I had no fucking resources, bro. Look at my resources, dude. Look at that shit, dude. Nothing. What am I going to do? Use this to jab it in my fucking skull? Like, Jesus, bro. Chill. It's just a game. Although sometimes we were prepared. For example, for Salazar, we were able to use two golden chicken eggs that we saved throughout our playthrough to instantly kill him with it. Very good strat. All right, so. Bruh, I just hit use. I'm a fucking doorknob. Awesome. Hey, Salazar, what do you call an egg that goes on a safari? I missed. I'm actually trash at this game, and I should uninstall the game. Bruh. Hey, Salazar, what do you call an egg that goes on a safari? Did that hit him? Dude, I I'm so lost right now. Hey, Salazar, what do you call an egg that goes on a safari? Quack. An egg's floor. Did I miss? <laughs> like, Jesus, what's going on? Hey, Salazar, what do you call an egg that goes on safari? That's right, bro. An egg's floor. You get it? No? Here, I'll, I'll give you another one. Boom, dude. You got fucked up, bro. Yo, scramble these nuts. Scramble these nuts. <laughs> hey, got first you. try, baby. Well, I'm an idiot, and we killed Sadler, and I didn't save the game afterwards because I was like, ah, oh, it's just the jet ski part, you know? Like, if you fail on that, you're, you're a moron. Like, you deserve to not get the platinum. And yeah, your boy failed. So we had to rebeat Sadler. Yo, we already had 30 seconds, bro. I might not even get out, bro. I kind of fucked up. And I'm getting hit. We might we might actually die. I should, probably should have saved. Bro, I didn't save. I got a real sad lady, dude. Bro. You all right? I'm not sure that was insane. Let's get our platinum. Professional, 844, 220 saves. And a B. Is that it? That's every gun. Do I have to buy it? I have to buy it, right? It's gonna auto save? You have to buy it in the game? No way, you have to go to the box? Oh my God, no way you have to do that. Three, two, one. This is the plus. Gun fanatic, boys. Our final fucking trophy. Let's go. Platinum, baby. Because boredom kills me. Boredom kills me, baby. You know it. I know it. Everybody fucking knows it, baby. Dude, I can take this fucker off, bro. Oh, God damn, bro. I love you.
And there it is, boys, the Resident Evil 4 Remake Platinum. And honestly, I had a damn good time for all six playthroughs. This game was absolutely amazing. I'm so glad I played the original before doing this one. I can see why it was so loved. This is honestly probably my game of the year so far, just because of how much fun I had with it. Now, if you're one of my real ones who made it to the end of the video, why don't you leave a comment below that says, all my homies hate Las Plagas. Other than that, guys, thanks again for watching. Leave a like on the video or sub for more, and I will see you guys next time. Leon, it's been six hours since our last transmission. I'm starting to get worried. Don't you mean well, man?